And now we get to part two of the first Punic War. Let's wreck it. After the gigantic battle at Cape Ecnomis, the Romans were now free to land on African soil. Ah, and yep. so they did. The Carthaginians chose to focus on defending the city of Carthage itself. Yep, one problem. They're gonna raid every surrounding village with ease. So the Romans immediately took the city of Aspis and yep. were then free to raid and plunder the countryside. They took over 20,000 slaves and a ton of booty. But then some orders arrived from the Senate. Send home the booty. What? Oh, but I want to stay. No, Steve, not you. They mean the treasure. Oh. Well, we are not watching any more of this filth. So the other consul left with the booty, leaving Regulus and his forces on their own. And they began advancing towards Carthage. Along the way, according to the ancient writer Livy, they encountered a literal dragon. Oh, really? Now, Livy was a Roman historian. So his account may be slightly exaggerated, but Maybe. this, I believe. As the Romans continued to plunder, the Carthaginian people flooded into the city. Now, not only was it in a major panic, but it was so crowded, the people began to starve. <laughs> Don't yeah. panic, everyone! Why? Look, I know you're all starving, but I still have food for me. So, you know, it's not all bad. Whoa! You're wasting your tomatoes! I don't know why the villagers just, just uh, don't try to overthrow them. Some kind of... Why wasn't there any kind of revolt? Like, uh, the people must have hated, the, like, the regime there. And you idiots wonder why you're starving? Oh well! It's just more food for me! Things weren't looking good for Carthage. They had to do something to stop the Romans rampaging the throughout their land. So they decided, finally, it was time to put an end to it. They headed out and set up on rough hilly terrain overlooking the Roman camp, mm. and they prepared for battle. Now, while the Carthaginians were the traditional masters of the sea, on land, they weren't always the brightest. Not at all. Case in point, <laughs> setting up in this... Like, I can remember they had, like, so many uh, different uh, ethnicities uh, in the group that couldn't, like, speak their own language. Like, that was a, a huge barrier, man. Position overlooking the Roman camp was just about the stupidest thing they could have done. Why? What? Well, there's something you gotta understand about Carthage. The Carthaginian land forces actually suffered from a multitude of different issues. First of all, since the Carthaginians were rich, 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 they could afford to pay a huge number of foreign yep. mercenaries to this fight for them. These mercenaries actually made up the vast majority of Carthage's forces, and therefore, Carthage's land armies were a melting pot of many different cultures. This, however, meant that if a battle wasn't going their way, there could be loyalty issues. Yeah, they just flee, man. Man, I ain't getting paid enough for this. You Balearic slingers better not be thinking of running away. What did he say? I don't know. I don't man. know. I don't speak Phoenician. Let's get out of here. Clearly, there were also language yeah. issues. The military generals tended to be Carthaginian, but they made a lot of strange decisions. For example, one of the most feared assets of the Carthaginian army were the war elephants. To a Roman soldier who had never even seen an elephant before, this was like fist yeah. fighting, a literal monster. Yet the Carthaginian... Yeah, their armor and weapons were actually quite decent, like we could hold up against the Romans with these, if they had proper tactics, I guess. Carthaginians continually kept placing the elephants in the rear, where they were no use. In a similar fashion, the neighboring region of Numidia provided Carthage with the most skilled cavalrymen in the world. But the Carthaginians often chose to fight on rough, uneven terrain, Why? where horses and elephants were less effective. And so, in this case, when the Carthaginians again chose the rough terrain near the Roman camp, the Romans easily sent them packing. Wow, Regulus, Did you? we're mere miles from Carthage. You sure are amazing. Yes, Steve. I know. <sighs> Steve? What's the matter? We've almost won. I just wish I could be as great as you, Regulus. Steve. Bro, what a you're <laughs> amazing. I mean, look at this thing. It's unbelievable. I know. But I mean, like, at war stuff. I'm such a noob. Don't tell My me. My tanks always get blown up. Don't. I can't even fly yeah. an aircraft straight. It's an ad to transition tanks? into World of Tanks or World of Thunder. Aircraft? What are you Come talking on. about, Steve? I know it. I'm talking 
about free-to-play online multiplayer combat game, and but this video is sponsored. I knew it, man. I knew Thunder. it. Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game yeah, ever nice. made. Don't just drive the tank, become one with the tank. Yeah, go support him. You can play But one big problem with War Thunder is obviously that premium uh, stuff is uh, quite OP. And this game is kind of grindy like. You, you really must be into it to get the good stuff. It's more than 2,000 battleships, aircraft, tanks, and helicopters in dynamic player versus player combat. With amazing 4K graphics, each vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components. And for history nerds like you and I, the vehicle collection in War Thunder spans over a hundred years of military development from the 1920s to the present day. Damn. I love the detailed damage mechanics in War Thunder. You ever think about it? Yeah, basically everything is one shot. That, that, that's how uh, it feels for me at least. The exact angle a shell hits an armored vehicle affects the resulting damage. War Thunder has yeah. every bullet and shell. It's actually quite impressive. Like Simulated with for realistic me. destruction. That's the kind of thing that gets me up in the morning. And by using my link in the description below, new and existing users can get an exclusive an existing... oversimplified decal to this. make their teeth I want to have a Roman sheet, man. The tank look extra spicy. Plus, you'll get a huge bonus pack, including premium vehicles and boosters. So play War Thunder now on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And as always, by using my link, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Invading Africa, getting some booty, yep. and sending the Carthaginians packing. The face. Everything was looking up for Regulus. A Roman victory seemed like it was only a matter of time. But then, Regulus realized something. He had been consul for almost a year, and his term was coming to an end. He knew that if his successor took over and he finished the job, then he would yep. get the naked statues, not Regulus. And there was no way Regulus was going to allow that. So He's gonna he go all in, what? The gun. You there, Carthaginian boy. I want you to deliver a message to your elders. I, Marcus Attilius Regulus, demand the total and unconditional surrender of Carthage. Unconditional surrender? Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us all to death first. Just yeah. deliver the message! Why don't we? Punk! He demands your total surrender. What? Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us all to death first. Hey, that's what I said. Well, boys, this Roman thinks we're out. But we're not out, are we, boys? No! We'll do what we always do in times like this. Hire somebody else to solve our problems for us. Darren, <laughs> bring in the Spartan. Oh. Regulus's overly harsh demands had had the unintended effect of reinvigorating Carthaginian resolve. Mm -hmm. They brought in a mercenary from the famed land of Sparta. Named yeah, I can remember this one. He, like, pumped up those armies. Like, with tactics. And he knew what to do. Xanthippus, to help dig them out of this situation. And we all know what Spartans are like. Yep. Xanthippus showed up and immediately took charge. All about he had to look around and said, You idiots, put the elephants in front of the army so they can smash into the Romans. Damn. And stop fighting on rough, uneven terrain. Find a big flat field so your superior cavalry can do their job. And what's this I hear about you giving a speech telling everyone they're going to die? Hey, I was just telling the people the truth. You're a politician. Lie to the people. Damn. And so Xanthippus led out the newly reformed Carthaginian army to meet Regulus in the Battle of the Bagradas River. The elephants, now in the front, smashed into the Roman lines, causing disarray. The cavalry, with total freedom of movement, outflanked the Roman infantry. Thanks to this impressive Spartan, the battle was a total Carthaginian victory. I think what also helped is because the Romans had so much red on their armor and shields and shit. Like, uh, this, this, like, uh, an extra point for the elephants. Like, they, they see that shit and they get, like, more aggressive, I guess. That could also help. Like, and Xanthippus. For, Just a theory, for I don't his know, man. stunning <laughs> victory was forced to flee Carthage because the leadership got jealous. Regulus, the what? Roman consul, was captured during the battle. Legend has it, he was brought before the Carthaginian council 
And they made a proposition. Well, Reggie, not looking so good anymore, is it? Looks like we beat you pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Up yours, you punic pansies! Now, now, Regulus. Nobody likes a sore loser, do they? No. How about this? We're going to send you back to Rome, and you convince the Roman Senate to surrender to us. If you fail, though, you got to come back so we can torture you to death. Okay? Well, okay. Well, you promise? I promise. Is hey he going to do this? Whoa, Regulus. I don't know. We thought you got captured. I did, but they sent me back to convince you to surrender. Well, should we? Surrender? No. Never surrender. Give them hell, boys. They're at the end of their rope. Anyway, I gotta go be tortured to death now. What? Yep, part of a deal I made. It's a long story. Whoa, hey, wait! Regulus! No, no, it's cool, guys. I promised. Regulus! This is ancient times. We massacre entire populations. We chop pets in half. You can break a promise. No, Tim! You never break a promise. That's... Too far! And so, Wait, Regulus went back to Carthage and was tortured to death. And for keeping his promise, he was immortalized Damn. as the leading symbol of... The ledge actually got what he want. Roman virtue. Meanwhile, after their defeat in Africa, the remaining Roman survivors, still in Africa, were still in Africa, and they needed to be rescued. So the Romans sent their fleet to pick him up and bring him home. They successfully fended off a Carthaginian fleet, grabbed the survivors, and made their way to Sicily. A great Easy. success. But then, things took a turn for the worse. Uh, sir? That cloud looks kind of angry. Fear not, coward. Oh. If we Romans can build a war fleet from scratch and defeat the Carthaginian Empire at their own game, why, then even Mother Nature herself will crumble before us. I laugh in the face of Mother Nature. Ha <laughs> ha! See? Mm -hmm. Come on, guys. Laugh at Mother Nature with me. I don't know <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> yep, yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. 284 ships. Nearly 80% of the Roman fleet was destroyed. Holy shit. As many as 100,000 men drowned in a terrifying act of nature. It's actually insane. Never before had Damn. Rome lost so many men in a single incident. A hundred thousand casualties for any other nation would be crippling. Any other nation would but hastily Rome. sue for peace. Any other nation would spend decades trying to recover. But Rome, but Rome yeah. was not just any other nation. Infamous for its unrelenting determination in the face of overwhelming odds, Rome said, well, I guess we'll just have to build another fleet. And they did. In just three months, they built 220 more ships. An astonishing feat. The Easy. Romans sent out their brand spanking new war fleet. And... No. no. They got caught in another storm. This time, Bro. a whole nother fleet was lost. And still, the Romans did not give up. The thing is, uh, the people back in the day, um, they didn't train them to specifically swim, so most of them fucking drowned, and I don't know if the uh, armor was that heavy that they couldn't swim at all, or something like that, but, but yeah, like nearly all of them died in the water. The Carthaginians couldn't believe it. Their en just learned to swim, man. enemy had Support. just lost hundreds of thousands of men, had two fleets almost entirely destroyed, and they still wouldn't surrender. As one Roman poet put it, the victor is not victorious if the vanquished does not consider himself so. In typical Roman fashion, after a short break, they were once again building another fleet. However, for now, after all the disasters at sea, the focus began shifting back to the land campaign in Sicily. The Carthaginians, overconfident from recent successes, attempted to retake Panormus, but the Romans countered the terrifying war elephants by throwing stuff at them and scaring them away. Nah. Having stopped the Carthaginian advance, the road was now open to the final Carthaginian stronghold on the island, Lilibium. Lilibium was an extremely well-fortified city. In 250 BC, the Romans laid siege. The Carthaginian defense, however, was fierce, and skilled blockade runners kept the city supplied. 
Progress was so slow that the siege would last another nine years. <laughs> to make matters worse, the Carthaginians later sent possibly the greatest military general of the time, a man named Hamilcar Barca, to the island. He engaged in a skillful campaign of guerrilla warfare behind enemy lines, and for the remainder of the war, he was a major thorn in the Roman side. For now, with the deadlock siege at Lilibium and the new Roman fleet at sea, things seemed to be at a standstill, and the Romans had to do something to break the deadlock. Thankfully, the Roman consul, Clodius Pulcher, had an idea. He tried to get things moving by attacking the Carthaginian fleet at Trapana. Now, before a battle, to predict if they would win, it was common for the Romans to look for signs from the gods. This could mean yeah. observing the weather or inspecting some cow livers. You know, typical religion stuff. In this case, Pulcher reportedly tried to feed some sacred chickens, but unfortunately for him, they wouldn't eat a crumb. A very bad sign. And well, he said, if they won't eat, then let them drink, stupid chickens. We'll observe the weather instead. Gods, give me a sign. Uh, ignore that. That's okay, a good one. how about this? If I can get this piece of paper into that trash basket, we'll win. Okay, if I can stand here silently for five seconds and do nothing, we'll win. <laughs> Pulcher chose to ignore the signs from the gods, and in the following battle, the superior Carthaginians tore them to shreds. It yep. also didn't help that by now the Romans had removed the Corvus to stabilize their ships, and without their secret weapon, it was a disaster, and Pulcher was disgraced. To make matters worse, the victorious Carthaginian fleet then went on to intercept a Roman supply fleet on its way to Lilibium. As they approached, however, they saw the signs of an incoming storm, so they took shelter. The Romans, on the other hand, said, Onward, men! Set sail! We've got to deliver these supplies stat! But sir, those clouds, don't you think we ought to have learned our lesson by now? Yes, Brian, we ought to have, but we haven't. Another fleet and 50,000 men lost in another storm. Disaster. Now, at this point, there still really isn't a clear winner. Sure, the Romans have captured most of Sicily and cornered the Carthaginian land forces at Lilibium, but the continued disasters at sea were critically depleting their resources, and without a strong fleet, yep. Rome could not win. Meanwhile, Hamilcar Bar. Bro, I, I thought that the Mediterranean Sea was m much more calmer. Like this, is insane. First. Just deliver the message. Oh. I accidentally skipped so much. Was it? Here? Win. Meanwhile, Hamilcar Barca was still knocking about and creating even more problems. So, where do we go from here? How does this war finally end? By now, the two sides had been fighting for 23 years. They That's were exhausted. Time. Their money, their resources, their strength were all utterly spent. The Carthaginians in particular were eager to see the war end so they could get back to trading and making money. So after the latest Roman disaster at sea, they said, look, there ain't no way in heck the Romans can come back again. They can't possibly afford to build another fleet. They're done. That's it. Recall the navy, repurpose them as merchant ships, and let's get back to making some money! <laughs> Assuming the Romans would mm -hmm. soon make peace, ben an anti-war faction within the government recalled a large portion of the navy, leaving Hamilcar on his own. The victors appeared to be declaring themselves victorious. Meanwhile, the vanquished were getting ready for round five. The Romans built another fleet, this time heavily relying on patriotic donations from the upper classes to afford it. And once Damn. again, they put to sea. Uh, <laughs> sir, the Romans have built another fleet. Oh, for goodness sake, Clarence, can't you see I'm busy rolling around in this pile of money? But sir, I don't care anymore, Clarence. I just don't. Care! The Carthaginian politicians made a fairly lackluster final effort with a poorly built fleet to <laughs> supply their forces in Sicily. But when the brand new Roman fleet caught them at the Battle of the Agates, even without their signature Corvus, they dealt them the final blow. And that was that. 23 years of war. Neither side could afford to keep fighting, but the Romans showed that they intended to anyway. The Carthaginians had no choice but to throw in the towel. The war had been long and hard, 
for both sides. But in the end, it was Roman determination that won the fight. The Romans had spent the entire war trying to find a way to deliver the knockout blow. They learned how to build a fleet and engage in naval combat. They developed ingenious new ways of waging war. They attempted an invasion of the Carthaginian heartland, and whenever disasters struck them, they always came back again and again. The Carthaginians, on the other hand, spent the entire war watching whatever Rome did and then figuring out how to respond. They were much more passive. And so, it's no wonder then that when both sides were close to collapse, Rome was the one who figured out how to go that little bit further. In 241 BC, the Carthaginian yeah. politician sent word to Hamilcar Barca that he was on his own and could choose to make peace with the Romans if he wished. Hamilcar was stunned. He felt betrayed by the politicians. Some sources say he refused to even negotiate. Nevertheless, terms had to be drawn up. Well, Hammy, I'm glad you Carthaginians have finally come to your senses and recognized who the true winner is. How many fleets did you lose? No, 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 no. Okay, here are our terms. You leave Sicily to us and return all of our prisoners. You're not allowed to make war against Syracuse or her allies, and you have to pay us 2,200 talents of silver over the next 20 years. What's a talent of silver? Well, to put it in perspective, in the year 2022, that'll be worth around, let's say, 40 million US dollars. Ay, caramba! That will cripple us! Mm. Wow, we got a real smart guy over here. Yeah, that's kind of the point, you dingus. Ugh, I guess I have no choice. I accept. Great! Oh, by the way, we changed our minds. You actually have to pay us 3,200 talents of silver over 10 years. Thanks for accepting. Dude! See you later. Hey, hey! Damn. You didn't let me say on cool! He didn't let me stay on cool. The treaty was extremely punishing, and by switching up the terms at the last minute, they enraged the Carthaginians. But still, one of the longest and deadliest wars at the time was finally over. The Romans had won. They achieved their aim of gaining Sicily. And Let's even go. though it wasn't part of the peace deal, they took advantage of a weakened Carthage and grabbed Corsica and Sardinia as well. Roman expansion beyond the Italian peninsula had just begun. The Romans hoped that now the Carthaginians would forever be under their thumb. Unfortunately, the harsh terms they placed on the Carthaginians at the end of the war left a growing anger, one that would come back to haunt them. One day, Carthage will have its revenge. <laughs> That's nice, dear. I'm serious, woman. Maybe not in my Wait, lifetime. Was he was he watching Drew Dunner? It's it's just true. Yeah, it must be. I'm serious, woman. Maybe not in my lifetime, but perhaps in must his be. my beautiful son. Lala. You are born into a momentous destiny. You shall be Rome's greatest enemy. You'll tear Rome limb from limb. You'll burn their pathetic city into the ground. You'll slaughter their people, men, women, and children. Men's My granted. child, you are vengeance. Stop telling our baby he's vengeance. But he is, Barbara. He's vengeance. That may be so someday. But for now, our son has a name. And you should call him that instead. His name is... Bro, I hope that he um, makes his parts on live. That, that, that is getting great. Yeah, that's actually it. This was the first one, quite decent. Like, <laughs> losing so many fleets, man. That would have crippled any other nation, but uh, except Rome. That was insane. Got here ending. Need the next episode's dead. Yeah, immediately. We wanna see that shit. And yeah, I guess that's it. I don't want to wait for so long, man. I hate it. I hate it. The waiting period between uh, the over oversimplified series. It's insane. But uh, I think the second and third, um, it should, should be all tangled together. Hopefully. Yeah. Leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see more of this shit? And go subscribe to Oversimplified. That's the most important thing. And I guess see you next time. Wafer.